We know that when two things are correlated, that means that they are related, they are linked, they are dependent. However, it doesn't necessarily tell us what causes what. What is the reason that these things are linked? What is the reason these things are dependent? So when we have two variables that are correlated, often one of them is causing the other to change. So let's look at what that might be. If you had uh, height and age, and you wanted to predict which one probably causes the other, you could say, okay, well, depending on how tall you are, that causes your age to be a certain thing. And when you think about that, it doesn't really make sense because age is like time, and time is always moving forward, and you can't stop you from aging. You don't stop aging ever. So aging is the independent variable, the one that determines what happens, and height is the result. So if you think of kids growing up, your age determines roughly your height. Now everyone's going to always have a little bit of variation, be a little bit different. Now next one, bone strength and milk consumption. Does having stronger bones cause you to drink more milk? You could maybe make a very weak argument that if you have very strong bones, your body is craving calcium, but more than likely drinking milk giving you calcium and vitamin D is going to strengthen your bones. So it makes more sense that the mechanism here of having these things in your body makes your bones stronger. Next one, puppies and happy kids. If you have a bunch of happy kids, does that cause you to have puppies? Well, potentially actually. If you have a bunch of happy children that beg for a puppy every day, maybe that would cause you to have puppies. More than likely if you have puppies around, that might cause you to have uh, happier children instead of unhappy children. So depending on how you phrase that, that might be something you could argue could switch, but it's probably this direction, puppies causing happy kids. Next one, child income and parental income. Does the child's income predict how much the parents will make, or does the parent's income predict how much the child will someday make? Usually whenever you're dealing with something where one thing comes first, in the case of, let's say, parents versus children, uh, the parent came first, therefore it probably is the cause of the thing that came later, the child. So how much money a parent makes can help you predict is the reason why a child might make more or less money. And then finally, this last one, grass color and temperature. Um, does the temperature getting hot, very hot or very cold, change the color of your grass, or does the color of your grass change the temperature outside? Well, more than likely the temperature, which is a much larger phenomenon, would affect the grass color. Um, otherwise, my lawn might uh, make the world seem like it's a very hot or very cold place based on its color. Occasionally we run into problems where the two variables in our graph don't necessarily seem to cause each other. If we look at cost of a home, does that cause you to have a more expensive car? Or does having a more expensive car cause you to have a more expensive home? Well, neither of those really makes a whole lot of sense. But if you think about what could be causing them both in the background, it might be income. If you have more income, that might cause you to have a more expensive car and having more income might also cause you to have a more expensive home. So sometimes when you have a graph like this, you're comparing one variable to another, but really there's actually a third variable that you don't even see that's causing this relationship to exist. So yes, home price and car price, they might have a really strong correlation, a really good pattern in their scatter plot here, but it doesn't mean that one of them is causing the other. It might be something that you don't see that's actually causing both. And just a quick vocab again, a uh, lurking variable is a variable that is not displayed, something you don't see on the graph, but causes both of the displayed variables. Income is the cause of both of these things. So again, just to reiterate, correlation does not equal causation. Just because there is a pattern here, just because these two things are clearly related to one another, does not mean that one of them is the reason for the other. One of them does not necessarily cause the other. Now let's go through some examples of uh, lurking variable situations. The amount that you pay in taxes and the amount in your heat bill 
are correlated, they are related. However, which one probably causes both of those things to happen? It would be the size of your house. If you have a large house, it's going to cost more to heat it, and if you have a large house, it's going to probably cost you more in taxes. Something like hours of football watch and hours of baseball watch, if you take that for different individuals, again, they are correlated. People who watch more football tend to watch more baseball. However, watching football doesn't cause you to watch baseball, and watching baseball doesn't really cause you to watch football, per se. It's probably how much you like sports in general. If you're someone who likes sports a lot, you're going to watch a lot of hours of both. This one's an interesting one. Do carpet stains cause your clothes to rip? Or do your ripped clothes cause your carpet to get stained? Well, neither of those really make sense. But if you are a dog owner, you would recognize both of these as uh, being the result of having a pet. So the number of puppies that you have running around your house will probably cause you to have lots of stains on your carpet and lots of ripped clothes. I can guarantee you that's true. Um, when you look at water bill and number of people in the family, does the number of people in the family cause your water bill to go up, or does the water bill cause the number of people in your family to go up? This one? This one's kind of a trick one here. It actually looks like uh, we might have something that does directly cause it. More people in your family is probably going to cause your water bill to go up. And in fact, that's what I did. I pulled a little trick one on you. Uh, so just always be thinking there's not always a lurking variable sometimes it does make sense for one of them to cause the other uh, and then these last two down here number of hits and number of strikeouts uh, if you're someone who has a ton of hits and a ton of strikeouts it's probably because you have a large number of at bats now in my case I just had a lot of strikeouts um, and then this last one last four digits of your phone number and your age does being older cause the last four digits of your phone number to be a certain pattern? Or do the last four digits in your phone number cause your age? Well, neither of those make sense, but what could really cause both? Well, nothing really. Um, when you get certain things that don't make any sense together, that aren't even correlated, it doesn't even make sense to talk about what causes what. There has to at least be a relationship, a link first. And that's when you have to decide, does one of them cause the other, or is there something behind the scenes causing both? Number of hits and number of strikeouts, if you look at professional baseball players, they are correlated. But then you have to figure out the reason is because of the number of at-bats. Water bill and number of people in the family are correlated, and it makes sense that one of them is probably a direct cause of the other. The one thing to note is that all of these say probably causes. We haven't proven anything. We are just speculating that this is the case. We are thinking deeply about the problem, making a reasonable prediction, but we have not proven it. If you want to prove it, you need a good experiment to actually uh, carry out and show that that's truly uh, the reason. So right now, this is all just uh, presuming what makes sense and thinking through the problem.